uh, at the summer camp. They were just so good to me and so sweet and such a wholesome couple. I loved working for them. So Well, welcome, everybody. <laughs> we are now live, and I have the privilege of introducing a beloved guest. I've known her my whole life. She came into the world through my love for her mother. This is my third born, Hi. Beth West. <laughs> You're 19, you just turned 19 in June, and you're going into your sophomore year at DeSales University. Indeed. Tell us what you're majoring in and why. Oh, and why. Yes. How long do we have? <laughs> okay. And tell us, tell us about your choice of DeSales. Okay. Yeah, so I am a double major in dance and psychology at DeSales. I chose DeSales mainly because of their dance program. I knew... I kind of knew in like eighth grade that I really, really loved dance and wanted to keep doing it forever. But I kind of like kept it up until I was like, what do you want to be when I grow up? I want to be a dancer. I didn't like, but I would just like secretly know that I kind of wanted to do that. And then that was like the one thing that kind of like kept me going. And then I was like, I want to be a dancer. And then that was like the one thing that kind of like kept me going. And then that was like the one thing that kind of like kept me going. That has a dance program is reasonably close to home and has some sort of faith background and the sales was the one that fit all those bills and it's been a good fit so we put in the title of this episode that we're going to be talking about living on a woke campus it's a little tough <laughs> so yeah i you know this that i was mm -hmm. giving given a an honorary doctorate by the sales university mm -hmm. in 2006 at which ago. point the sales was well known in the Catholic world for being a very solid Catholic school. Mm -hmm. And it was even a feeder. They had a feeder program into the John Paul II Institute. Oh, wow. I didn't I know that. I got my master's degree. Mm -hmm. They did. The, they had a marriage and family studies program. And do they, they, they still have it. They yeah. still have it. It's about to die, though. I know the girl who is the last graduate of the marriage and family studies program. Yeah. And since then, since, uh, well, since the new administration came in a few years ago, things mm -hmm. have not been so solidly Catholic. Yeah. And the place has gone woke. Yeah. What, what, Slowly. <laughs> what do you have to say about your experience uh, with that? When I boarded, when I got on, I said boarded, because I, I was about to get this analogy. When I went to the sales, I felt like I was boarding a sinking ship. Uh, it was an accurate <laughs> description. <laughs> it feels like a bit of a Catholic ship. You went in as a committed young catholic yes <laughs> who loves to dance yes but you're in an art program at a woke <laughs> campus yes. what's that like day to day oh man it's i mean i have a lot of compassion i think it's caused me to reflect a lot on why because it is true that like the arts especially are a hub for yep. people who are kind of spreading this false ideology and i think that's not a con that's not a, a coincidence it's like People who are artists are like open-minded, open-souled, abstract thinkers. And when you have that gift without a foundation, that's when you just get way more quickly swept up into all sorts of things. And also people with that temperament of like open-mindedness and interest in abstractness, they also tend to have a lot of compassion, I yes, think. Yes. And then compassion is something that gets hijacked and turned into like this engine for something that isn't actually love um so it causes a lot of reflection on that and i also have a lot of there's genuine art that comes out of it because art you like to say art is the expression of the heart right and and i see a lot of real hearts that's what i primarily see when yeah. i see you know lots of kids at my school who just don't know who they are and don't know what marriage is and and portray that in all sorts of different ways and i just see real hearts and real hurting hearts and especially when they then make art about it because they do i mean i've seen dances um i mean because i'm in a dance program so primarily for me it's dances that are like very explicitly about all these topics and how do you stay grounded in the midst of that as a person of faith mm -hmm. as a person committed to what the church holds out to the world to be what it means to be human, mm -hmm. and you're going into an environment where you're getting not just a message that's a little bit off, but in many ways diametrically opposed yeah. to Catholic anthropology. How do you, as one with that sensitive, artistic, mm. open heart, how do you stay grounded in that environment? That's a great question. 
you, I mean, this is such a cliche answer, but it is true. I mean, I'm very grateful for the friends that I do have. I'll tell a funny story. I, uh, <laughs> when I went to orientation, you know, after I got home a couple of weeks after orientation, I vented to you and you said afterwards, that sounds a lot more like deorientation. And I was like, yes. Disorientation. Di- oh yes. You said disorientation. I was yes. like, yes, disorientation. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was just really, I won't get into the details, but not my favorite keynote speakers ever. How about that? Um, And (laughs) orientation was three days long, three days that I didn't want to be existing for. And then we got off. I had, fortunately, a friend of mine, um, I knew someone going into the sales who was a junior who um, knows all the Catholic people. So she had told me they pray rosary together every night at 7.30. And the last program of orientation got off at like, 7.23 or something and we're all it was the whole class of 2025 on a hill getting a photo Mm -hmm. you're all dismissed orientation is over i'm like what time is it it's 7.23 the they pray rosary at the jesus statue all the way on the other side of campus and i was like mad dash and i I (laughs) bolted with this massive backpack like flapping on my back i'm not i'm not a runner i don't run I ran. I hoofed it all the way across campus. And then it's just like, you know, like three, maybe five people, all upperclassmen sitting peacefully at their statue. And then they see in the distance this strange figure bolting towards them. And I'm like <laughs> this whole hullabaloo of a flapping backpack and panting. And I burst. I literally, I burst onto the statue and I said, are you the Catholic people? <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh. And I literally flopped down and I was like. I found you. So they've helped keep you grounded. <laughs> yes, in the midst of a, a woke campus. <laughs> yes, where you're you're you are learning good skills yes, about yes, your craft. Very good skills. But you're not only a dancer; mm-hmm. you're a painter. And yes. We, we want to talk about some of the works that you've done. Oh yeah. First, though, before we get into some of your paintings, and then we're going to talk about some of your dance. Mm-hmm. I want to just make the connection for our viewers more explicitly about why art is so important to us at the Theology Mm -hmm. of the Body Institute. And I have some notes here from John Paul II's Letter to Artists. If you haven't read John Paul II's Letter to Artists, you need, it's a quick read, expose yourself to this. This is rich, rich stuff. And and I want to frame it up like this. Theology of the Body and art have the very same goal, Mm -hmm. which is to make visible what is invisible. Mm -hmm. You know this very well, having been my daughter for your whole life. Mm -hmm. Uh, The thesis statement of the theology of the body, that the body and only the body Mm -hmm. is capable of making visible what is invisible, the spiritual and the divine. Mm -hmm. Well, in this letter to artists, John Paul II says, art must make perceptible the world of the spirit, of the invisible, of God. Mm. So theology of the body, this idea that our bodies make visible, the invisible mystery of God, Mm -hmm. and art have the very same goal. Mm. John Paul II also says, every genuine artistic intuition goes beyond what the senses perceive Mm -hmm. and reaching beneath reality's surface strives to interpret its hidden mystery. Mm. Now, as as an artist, how would you say your paintings and your dance strive to to get to this mystery below the surface of reality that you don't you don't immediately see it with your eyes or or sense it with your five senses, mm-hmm. but it's there. Mm-hmm. And art's job is to make perceptible these invisible intangible transcendent realities how oh, how man. have you yeah that's a big one <laughs> how has your art been an experience of that for you uh, or maybe maybe we could put it this way how has other people's art done that for you and inspired you to do the same with your mm, own art that's a great question i think in terms of other people's art i think i feel definitely inspired by other people's art and inspired by other people expressing their hearts and i feel especially like empowered to learn how to do that myself. When I see people using techniques, um, you know, at school I learn how to dance. When I see other people painting and illustrating and watch their craft and observe their craft, it makes me go, oh, okay, that's the tools to use. And then it's like an empowering thing 
to like then be able to do that myself but that description of like making visible the invisible reality beneath the surface of life i'd say it's pretty darn accurate i think um i spend a lot of time swimming in those waters of the soul right like that's what a lot of my prayer life is i feel like i do a lot of journaling in prayer and it's just kind of like let me sit with god and like sink down a few layers and mm-hmm, just feel mm-hmm. what what's moving and stirring and it's so hard to describe right because this whole idea is that it's beneath the surface of reality and yet we use tools from reality to try to describe it is like anyways but but right there <laughs> is also the principle of theology of the body mm-hmm. which is physical reality the stuff that we yeah. experience every day is how we come to understand and encounter these divine transcendent mysteries it's not that we have to get beyond this world we have to see this world as infused with the mystery yes yes and and that's the gift of of the artist the artist the true artist is the one who sees that this world this reality this concrete day-to-day existence is infused with the mystery and the artist's job is to to tease that out Mm -hmm. pull it out to pull it out and and express it get it Make it visible and tangible mm-hmm, to others. Mm-hmm. Who who have been some artists that have inspired you in that way, done that for oh. you? Like, I don't know, we grew up in our house watching lots of movies and listening oh, yeah. to lots of music. Mm-hmm. Um, Wendy, your mom and I did our, our, our best to try to expose you mm-hmm. to art. Um, in that environment growing up, can you look back and say... Yeah, that movie or that song or that concert or that dance recital was was a moment in your life where something got awakened in you. Oh, that's a great question. I don't know if there's any like one moment that sticks out to me. You're definitely right that like it's almost like a fish doesn't know it's in water. Mm -hmm, Like it's mm -hmm. definitely like an environment of appreciating art. Um, I definitely was inspired by my older brother, um, Thomas, whose artistic talents are making all this happen right now. Thanks, Thomas. Yeah, thanks, Thomas. Thomas is our (laughs) producer here. Um, This is a family affair. It sure is. No, definitely, I can remember so vividly being inspired by his creativity and yeah definitely music is big, especially for a dancer. Music is huge. Music is often like, it's the uh, canvas and also the sometimes the seed of art for a dancer so that's really huge and like we always have done a lot of music appreciating starting with you sharing a ton of music with us Mm -hmm. and then your kids sharing music with you and all of us making music and talking about music and all that's huge um I mean, also my aunt, your sister, Marion, uh, is a dancer, and she's another, like, role model for me to see, like, oh, you can do this thing, dancing. And she also went to DeSales. Also went to DeSales, yeah, so. And it was when she graduated in 2006 that mm-hmm. I was the commencement speaker. Right. When I got my honorary doctorate, and it was it was fun to give the commencement speech at mm-hmm. my own sister's graduation from DeSales, and I actually got to hand her her diploma. That's pretty cool. Which was fun. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's great. It's fun to talk to her because I'm at her old stomping grounds and, you know, the same like lingo gets thrown around campus as it did back then. So it's fun. I remember it was uh, two or three summers ago um, that you and I went out for lunch and you shared some of your art with me. Mm. And it showed me it gave me a window into my daughter that I had never mm-hmm. had before. And I was in amazement at your ability through your art to express, press out the stuff that was going on inside mm-hmm. you. And mm-hmm. I, I have this line from Letter to Artists, again, from John Paul II. Uh, he says this, An artist's work offers an exceptional mode of expression Mm. for his spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. Works of art speak of their authors. They enable us to know their inner life. Mm -hmm. How about we show a work of your art, and you can talk about how it reveals your 
in her life. Absolutely. Now, this can be really vulnerable. Oh, I, I have trust. See, the cool thing about art is that I see it as the perfect veil. And I'll crack this open for you guys, so I'm not going to like leave the viewers in the dark. So I guess that makes it a little more vulnerable. But in general, I feel like part of what I love about art is it does exactly that. It shows the interior life like so vividly. And yet it also takes a certain sensitivity to get in touch with art. And so I just have this confidence that whenever someone looks at a piece of art that I've done, if they have a heart that can get in touch with art, then they'll see me. And if they don't, then they won't. And so they will see exactly what ah, their hearts are prepared to see. It's kind of like kind of like the parables where Jesus, right. you know, the disciples say, why do you teach in parables? And Jesus says, so that those who see will see, but those who don't, won't. won't. That's really cool. Yeah, that's that's so, part of why I love it, because I can... Um, so you can, it's almost <laughs> like you can bear your soul safely. Yes, and because, secretly. And secretly, <laughs> yes. because only those... Who see it will see it. Exactly. It's perfect. And those who know how to see it also, generally speaking, know how to honor it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a really, that's a really beautiful insight that I've, oh. I never kind of, I've never looked at it quite at that angle. It gives me so much freedom because I, it's, it's, there's something in me that has this secret little smirk when I like, <laughs> <laughs> when I share a piece of art with the world or I put it on Instagram and right. and I know that it actually tells like an incredibly deep vulnerable story of my like profound suffering or prayer life or something that I would only verbally describe to my closest friends and it's all contained in this image but no one will know that and they will know exactly as much as they mm. are able to know and so it's just kind of like because we all want to share our souls right? Right, right we all want to share our souls and then that's like that whole like oh, but is it safe to share myself? And then, you know, and there's all sorts of, that's why we have healthy relationships, right? Safe places to share. But there's just something so good about being like, this is what I feel. And now it's out of me and it's here. That's why I love to make art. Because I, as I say, I, I draw so that I can look at my feelings and be mad at them. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes if it's like suffering art or it's moody uh -huh. art i'll like 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 a little two-year-old with an angry crayon well that reminds Sorry. me yeah. of something else jp2 uh, says <laughs> about suffering that is inherent in doing art yeah uh he says this in i'm holding up another little great work that everybody should get your hands on oh, it's yeah. called god is beauty a retreat on the gospel and art carol voitiwa gave this in 1962, long before he became Pope John Paul II. And the Theology of the Body Institute just recently published this in English for the very first time. And there's lots of commentaries and reflections in there as well. But in this book, he says, I have it on my computer screen here. He says, one pays so much for talent. Talent takes an immense toll on the artist. Works of talent grow and mature in pain, mm -hmm. he says, similar to labor pains. Mm -hmm. And then he says in his letter to artists that artists experience a certain torment in expressing the world of the ineffable. No. What does ineffable mean? Ineffable. You, you can't speak it. You can't say it. Uh, it's, it's beyond words. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, there's a, you were saying that when you, you draw something, how, how did you put it? I said, I, I draw so I can look at my feelings and be angry and at them. And be angry. <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's also a suffering mm -hmm. here. How, how would you, before we get to a work of your art, mm -hmm. can you take us through the process of sure. those labor pains? Sure. Uh, what, what, do you, to go with that image of mm -hmm. labor pains, mm -hmm. is it fitting to say that you conceive a work oh, of yeah. art? Like it's something that you receive and you kind of bear it mm -hmm. and then give birth to it? Is that, oh, yeah. you can relate to that analogy? Definitely. Unfold that for us and, and your process. And then we'll bring up one of yeah. your works of art and talk about it. So there's, this is very different for different artists. And I have been really enriched by talking to Thomas about how our artistic processes are very different. Mm -hmm. And that analogy works for both of us, but in very different ways. So this is me speaking for myself, not for all artistic sure. process, um, but for Beth. I will have usually a moment where it just kind of like clicks and I see it and it's like um, that like 
underneath the surface that we were talking about and like soaking in these waters of experience and emotions and I mean I'm 19 which means I've been a teenager for a while which means you got a lot of feelings it's just how it works <laughs> and and you sit and stew in all these underneath the surface of life things and then every once in a while it'll just like becomes solid for me and i see like oh that's what it is mm -hmm. that thing that i'm experiencing that i can't explain this is the image that explains it and it just and it's like the moment of conception where it's like yes that's what it looks like and then and then there's like the is that a is that a is that aha moment is that a release a relief is it a is it now, oh my gosh, now I see it, but now I have to yes. create it? It's, and it's there's both. a burden there too? Yes, because it's like, oh, yay, there it is. Now I know. But then it's like, this is going to drive me insane until it's expressed. Yep. Yep. And that is crazy, especially because you don't have, you can't just draw your whole life, right? Like, it's like, oh, but I have to put it off. Oh, but, you know, and you have all sorts of obstacles that come in the way of actually expressing that so then it is like it's both it's a huge relief because it's like yeah, yeah i see it but then it's like oh my gosh i have to make this or i'm gonna go insane um so then there's like the drive and that's where i mean my like practical process so after i have that image then i sketch um this is a little beth trick that this is kind of it's kind of funny but it's also kind of a way that dance also informs my drawing a lot of what i not everything i draw but a lot of my drawings include the human form in some capacity mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and it's very helpful many artists will know it's very helpful to have a reference of like an image of the human form in that position or a similar position so you can reference it and get the anatomy right. looking like a human right um and i've spent many hours searching the internet for reference images and eventually i started needing to express poses that are so not common enough to just find them by a Google search. Mm, and mm -hmm. I started physicalizing them myself. So I'll, this is often a part of my artistic process is I'll set up a camera and I'll set up the pose that I have in my head. Fascinating. And so this is where I go into dance mode. I'm, because, I'm learning things yeah, about you right now. I, yeah. don't, I didn't know this about your oh, yeah. process. Oh yeah. If you, scroll, if you scroll through my phone, you'll see so many videos of me just like standing in, in our house. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> all sorts of terror. It's really dorky. I usually delete them after, but sometimes I forget to. And then, oh, anyways. But because um, then, then I go into dancer mode and then whatever I'm feeling that I'm trying to express, I'll physicalize it mm -hmm. and embody it. And then I'll go through and take screenshots from that video. And then I'll find like, oh, there it was. Fascinating. And then I'll use that as my reference image for my sketch. Um, and then usually the, you know, the human form, whatever pose I needed is just one of the building blocks. So it'll be like, I'll, what? You... Well, well, there again is the beautiful, sorry for interrupting. No, go ahead. There, there again is the beautiful connection between art and theology yes. of the body. Yes. Right? In your very artistic process, you are trying to make visible an invisible reality mm -hmm. and you're doing it with your body. Yeah. And you have to put your body in certain shapes to convey that message, mm -hmm. which which is right in keeping with John Paul II's teaching on the language of our body. Our bodies speak, they say something. Yeah. And and they say something in the way we hold them, in the in the posture we have, in the in the position, in the movement. Mm -hmm. So you 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 go through all those movements, you do a video, and then you you look through it and you say that mm -hmm. posture or that movement captures mm -hmm. the the invisible thing I was trying to convey, mm -hmm. and then you take you go from the picture to a sketch? To a sketch, yeah. So I'll have my sketchbook. Um, depending on how much time I choose to invest in something, sometimes it'll get to the sketchbook and I'll spend a bit of time with it in the sketchbook and that's where it'll live. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I just do a rough sketch in the sketchbook where it's just here's the elements, this is where they go, and then I'll transfer it onto a bigger piece of paper and then invest in like more of a finished illustration. Um, that just depends on what I'm feeling like. Um, so if I do that, so I'll do sketch, I'll use that human form and then I'll incorporate whatever other elements I needed to communicate with um, and then transfer that sketch onto a bigger piece of paper. All this is the hard part. And I'd say this is like 50% of the work is getting to the point where I have a sketch on the piece of paper that's going to be the final. That's probably 50% of the work. And the mm -hmm. upfront work is my least favorite part. And then becomes my favorite part where I will put that sketch on an artboard. I set it up. I get my tea. I get my podcast. And I get my paints. 
and just go. And so then, you're listening to a podcast oh, yeah. that may or may not be even related to oh, what sure. you're you're sketching. Oh yeah, it could be fascinating. Oh yeah, it's my happy place. That uh-huh. is my happy place. <laughs> oh, it's so podcast great. tea tea painting painting. It's beautiful. <laughs> so do you want to jump in and show us a work? Oh sure, yeah. So uh, this one, bridegroom in the garden. This one definitely comes from my own interior prayer life in a big way. So what you'll see is this figure of a woman, um, this white line work figure. Uh, She's white, left white to to, uh, have a bridal image. That's why I left her white. And also Mm -hmm. because of the florals. Um, And she's in this surrendered posture. Um, The flowers represent her heart. So her garden, her interior, um, all that's precious about her and Mm. her personhood um and precious and vulnerable and then there's this shape on her chest um that's a mandorla you want to talk about mandorla real quick papa sure the mandorla is an image in sacred art that is formed when you bring two spheres two circles together and when they overlap in the center it's the the term mandorla it's Uh, on the logo right behind you right now oh yeah it's right in our Theology of the Body Institute logo. Mm -hmm. The mandorla is actually Italian for almond. So it's an almond shape, but Mm -hmm. it's it's also a very beautiful and intimate idea of the marriage between heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the marriage between heaven and earth happens in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So oftentimes when you see an icon of the Theotokos, Mm -hmm. her womb is, is in this shape. And I think there are some other works of your yeah, art we'll that we'll up. get to mm-hmm. that that depict this as well so the mandorla once once it's pointed out to you once you see this shape you'll you'll start to recognize it everywhere in sacred art mm-hmm. uh it's you can barely walk into a church uh in america or certainly in europe without seeing this mandorla worked into the sacred art of a, a church building so let's go back to the, the yeah. image here So So it's it's an image of your heart open. Yes, heart open and encountering heaven because this there's this hand um, reaching into this woman's heart, and that's the hand of Christ, Um, and it's revealed to be Christ's hand by the nail mark in the palm. You see the back of the palm from this angle, right? Um, And then out of that nail mark, there's flowing blood and water, and it's flowing into her. So she's being cleansed from the inside out by this flow of blood and water from the wound of Christ that's entering into her garden. And so that that shape is where heaven and earth are meeting. Um, and Glory. Then, yeah. And then there's also, this is kind of a detail, but um, it's, it's a little bit hard to see with the line work. Uh, most of the flowers are contained within the, like, line work of the figure so it's supposed to be like you're seeing what's inside of her but if you look closely there's actually a couple vines yes, that are out. snaking out right. so by virtue of Oof. of the marriage of the bridegroom entering into her her beauty is coming out in wow. response to that um so there's there's like a little vine that snakes up his arm and one that snakes up kind of by her neck a little bit there um and then also just the the posture of the figure is really meaningful to me in this of just like complete surrender um yeah you can't not be reminded oh hi thomas (laughs) that was a little peekaboo from our producer (laughs) that's youtube live for you everybody (laughs) that was fun (laughs) that was funny when you saw yourself seeing yourself oops <laughs> that was funny. You can't be aware of sacred art uh, seeing this image without thinking of Bernini mm. and Teresa of Avila. Yes, an apt comparison for sure. In ecstasy. Yeah, this is like Teresa of Avila with x ray goggles. That's ooh, ooh, <laughs> ooh, ooh. Now, I often show, I mean, it's rare that I don't show in my talks and in my classes the image of St. Teresa in ecstasy. Mm-hmm. And for those who may not be familiar with this, it's one of the most... Thomas, do you have the ability to, to pull up Teresa of Avila? Can yeah, you... Give me a second. Yeah, okay. Thomas will pull it up in, in just a minute for our, our viewers. But Teresa of Avila in ecstasy is, in my mind, one of the holiest Mm -hmm. and most sacred images in the whole tradition 
of sacred art, and it, 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 it shows us where the Christian life is meant to lead us. Mm-hmm. John Paul II says in his document on the third millennium that we have a duty as Christians to show the world the depth to which Christian prayer can lead. Mm, yeah. And he names Teresa of Avila specifically and John of the Cross. He says, of all the many shining examples, how can we forget St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross? And he says, when we go on this journey of, of deep Christian prayer, it will take us through very painful purifications. Here we go. Here's Teresa. Great. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, this is in a chapel outside Rome. Uh, I, I wish I could remember. I think it's Mar- the Mary of the Victory Chapel, I believe it is, outside Rome. I've been there many times. It's gorgeous. There are documented cases of conversions by atheists who have seen this sacred art carved in marble by Bernini. And and what's happening here is the surrender of the bride to the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. And it is a holy, sacred mystery that Christ is the bridegroom, the church is the bride. And John Paul II says this journey of prayer takes us to what the mystics describe as the ineffable joy of nuptial union with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Teresa had this experience of an angel showing up in her prayer life who thrust her heart through with what she called a a, a spear with a tip of fire. Um, Yeah, here it is. Here's the wide angle. A spear with a a tip of fire, and, and this spear was thrust into her heart so deeply she says it reached my entrails and when the angel pulled it out i felt like he was pulling out my entrails my guts with it Mm. and it set me afire with with such a burning love uh she says it made me moan the pain the agony of this love was was so painful that it made her moan but she said the ecstasy was so sweet she never wanted it to stop Mm She said, I knew then that there is nothing in this world that can satisfy my desire Mm -hmm. other than union with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, can we go back to Beth's image here? Without without revealing too much, (laughs) um, what this is you are sketching here an experience of your own prayer. Mm-hmm. This is not just something you read about in a book or, no. or saw Teresa of Avila and, and thought, oh, I'll sketch that too. This is, this is coming from your own interior life. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, here I'll, I'll quote JP too. He says, artists express themselves to the point where their work becomes a unique disclosure of their own being of what they are and of how they are what they are. Through art, the artist reveals his own inner life, as we've been saying. So can you say a little bit more about yeah. your own experience of this? I mean, that's, it's not usual for, you were how old when you sketched this? Oh, 17, I think? So this 17. was two years ago. Mm-hmm. That's not typical for a 17-year-old person to experience this kind of... <laughs> intimacy with the Lord w- mm. with, without sharing too much what, sure. what can you share of that experience yeah no I think it's important to me to remember what led up to this and I think it's a good thing for the viewers to hear too this this what led to this painting is not my typical experience of prayer it was definitely an out of the ordinary experience but I remember it was um, a week we had a class going on here at Black Rock, so that means lots of faith-filled, passionate people with open hearts learning about the Lord and sharing their experiences. I remember I had been to, if you've ever been to one of these classes, you know on Thursday night, there's a really beautiful time that students get up and share their hearts and what the Lord has been working in their hearts throughout this week, and it must have been a 2B2 or 3, because it was a very, like, People were going seasoned deep. students. Yes, seasoned students yeah. going really deep and talking about their interior experiences. Um, and I remember just being convicted by different things I saw that night of people whose hearts were just so open and just so pierced in ways that like made me uncomfortable. Mm, and I was like, mm. I'm not there. And I like remember seeing all this and like, oh my gosh. And I, 
it caused me to have a really just like genuine prayer of like crying out to God and being like, I, I'm so bad at saying yes to you. Mm, like I'm so, mm. like I'm trying to and I want to, but it's just my spirit isn't developed to that point and my yes is really small and I and I don't even really understand what I'm saying yes to like I know I, like that's been something I've taken deep in my heart is like that our, our job is to say yes to the Lord right and that's that's our creaturely posture and that's like the foundation of our relationship with God is just yes but I'm like praying into this and I'm like my yes is really small and really weak and I don't even know what you're doing or what you are and I'm just like I but please 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 take that like that was just this I was just begging I was just begging God please this is really a pathetic yes but like please take it please um and and that was just a really deep prayer I was writing it down and and um felt this like affirmation from the Lord that he knows my heart because because who would you know he's like he sees the genuineness of my desire and I felt that affirmation and then I felt just, I guess I just got a, a glimpse of something that's best just captured in that painting. And, and it was, again, very unusual for me, not my typical experience of prayer, but I did, it became something no longer attached to the words and much Beautiful. more just, I felt the presence of the Lord in a different way and in a more in interior way and I felt out of my usual and honestly it was uncomfortable it was like what it was like this big expanding mm -hmm. strange mm -hmm. new foreign uh, what was that type thing and um and then I saw it I had that little click and I was like that's what it is I have to paint it um and I did and then Months later, you began using this in your classes, and I remember we had uh, several students have told me that it's blessed them, and I know it's blessed multiple students, but I had one woman share that it had really particularly just unlocked something in wow, her. Wow, awesome. And it had been like like some sort of long-standing like block that she had had with the Lord over many, many years had been just expressed and help to be healed Powerful. by that image and i remember her coming up to me and saying that and i was like i was like oh my gosh that was for you because like oh, yeah because i because that experience in prayer was like like not just the painting and the labor of painting it but like i mean like all the way back to that prayer experience i'm so sure it was for her i mean it was for me too but like i it was just so out of the ordinary and it was i just feel like if it blessed her then the whole thing's worth it and i don't need any other explanation yep. And one heart was touched by my fingers on this page, and that's all I need. And I was like, that was for you. Uh, thank you so much. That's, that's the power of art. Yeah. Something that was impressed in your heart got expressed mm -hmm. and was able to impress itself on someone else's on heart. Someone else's heart. Yeah. That's the power of art. Mm -hmm. And this is why JP2 says the church needs artists mm. to communicate the truths of the faith because the truths of the faith are these ineffable invisible mysteries mm -hmm. that need to be communicated through sound through color yeah. through the movement of the body in dance mm -hmm. uh, through painting through sculpture through poetry and and I, I just as your father to see your art, flowering is is a tremendous gift because it it and and this actually back to our woke campus thing mm -hmm. like any dad who who loves his children i was concerned about sending you off to a woke campus but i also know the depth of your prayer life mm -hmm. to 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 the extent that you've shared it with me mm -hmm. and a painting like that reveals it to me um and, and I, I know that your sincerity of your yes to the Lord, which as you said, and this, I think this is a really important takeaway from what you said, it was just, it was a little weak mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. but it's a real 
Mm-hmm. That's, that's reality. Oftentimes mm-hmm. we think of prayer as where we, we put on our pious mask mm-hmm. to give our yes to Jesus in a kind of heroic way. Your yes was taking your masks off and looking honestly at your weakness. Mm-hmm. That's real prayer. Mm-hmm. That's genuine prayer. And I know because of the genuineness of your prayer that you could go to this campus and and survive. Yeah. Can I say a bit please, about that? Please. I, I think it's been interesting for me, and I definitely think that the Lord is using this environment to help me grow. And I think I, I almost didn't realize how passionate I am about my faith until I got there, because I... I think that the enemy loves to speak lies to us and there are a whole host of lies that he's spoken to me over many years but one of the ones that he likes to whisper to me is like and it kind of goes into that that weak yes where I'm just so desperately begging God that this yes is enough because I think there's this little lie Mm -hmm. that the enemy whispers to me of like you're not you're not enough you're not like especially being surrounded by people who are passionate about their faith and they're so convicted and they're so on fire and maybe they have like a gift for like evangelization and more of like Mm -hmm. the immediate sense of the word that isn't my gift and I see it and I'm like oh I'm not that I'm not on fire the way they are and there's just this little whisper that like oh you're not strong enough or like your faith isn't isn't enough and like maybe you have it now but if you were under fire you know you wouldn't hold on to these beliefs and you just have it because it's what's around you and it's not you know like all sorts Mm -hmm, of lies along mm -hmm, that track have mm -hmm. been whispered to me and so but then when I (laughs) went to this school I like realized I was so passionate because I'm like, no, that's wrong. <laughs> no. <laughs> Especially when when the faith is misrepresented. I Like, when people have a totally different, and I'll talk about this in a second too, like, that opposite ideology, like, that's more of a compassion response. But when people, like, the faith gets watered down yep, yep. and presented in a weak way, that's when I get, like, mm, riled up. I'm like, mm. no, that's my faith. Don't say that. Mm. And I get all, like, yeah. <laughs> And then realizing that, it's like, oh, I guess I must care about this. I guess, and it's made me stronger because I've had to become, you know, the little campus ministry bubble's pretty tiny. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, you know, started taking minimal little steps in leadership of it, even in my freshman year. And I'm sure that'll continue. Um, and And having that responsibility of like, if I want the faith to come alive, I have to do it. If I want there to be some sort of ministry club or opportunity that isn't there, I'm going to make it. I'm going to start prayer. I'm going to bring people together. And that just putting myself in a situation where I have to do that shows me that I can. And that's a, it's been a gift. You, you know what JP2 calls that. What does he call that? He calls that the Petrine dimension of the church flowing from the, the Marian, Marian yes. dimension of the church. So I'll unpack this a little bit for our, our viewers here. JP2, this is so important, and I say it on Sunday night at the start of every TOB1, because if we get this wrong, we get the whole thing wrong. He says, the Marian dimension of the church precedes the Petrine. Okay, fancy words, not the kind of words we use every day. What the heck's he talking about? The Marian dimension is of Mary, Marian, Mm -hmm. of Mary. It's that openness that your very work of art there was illustrating, that openness to the divine gift. Can we bring that up again one more time, Thomas? Something I, I, I love about this image of the hand going into your heart, the hand of the Lord, it reminds me of that uh, line in the book of Revelation. I stand at the door and knock, mm-hmm. and if you open to me, I will come in, right? This image of your prayer life is that Marian dimension where you open to receive the Petrine dimension of the church, of Peter, Petrine, Mm -hmm. is the go make disciples. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to make disciples without first being in that receiving of the divine life, then you're going to make disciples not of Christ, but of yourself and Mm -hmm. your own ideas. But that I want to affirm in you, Beth, that that zeal that you feel to to go into your campus and share this good news comes is the fruit precisely of being in that that posture. So you mm. go, girl. Stay yeah. in that posture, Thanks, and it will very naturally flow out of you yeah. into your campus life. Thank you. Do you want to share another work of art with oh, us? Oh, I do. Yeah. Um, Let's go to I, the next one. Actually, bef- okay. Oh, before did you? 
before we do, can I yeah. say one other thing about being at DeSales? Please, There's just please, one please, other yeah. thought I had. I think you were asking about um, the grounding and mm -hmm. like how to stay grounded and, and all that. I think what what we were just talking about, what it has allowed me to do when I'm encountered, when I encounter the more like deliberately counter to the faith, messages deliberately counter to the faith, um, it, I'm more able to receive the real hearts, right? So like in the dance program, like I see like students making works of art that are like deliberately pushing a very untrue ideology yes, on yes. the viewers. And um, that's the whole message and the whole school is rallying behind it. Oh yay, we're, you know, the whole thing. And when I, because of my experience of art, and what art is, I'm able to look at that and say, that's a beautiful piece of art where people are expressing their real experiences and they just didn't find the right answer. Mm, mm. But I can see that's a good piece of art in that it expresses a real thing you're feeling. You're feeling, right. And I see your real feelings and I see your humanity and that's so good. And this art is beautiful because it expresses the invisible realities it's just that you've provided a solution to your suffering that isn't a solution oh, of love. Oh, that's but very But so much of the art is so good. It's just there's this, and here's the answer, and that's where they provide the wrong answer. But I can see such beautiful art, and so, and that's why it doesn't phase me so much. I mean, it can be yes. intense. It can be a lot to receive. I mean, you know. Well, even, that's that speaks also to your purity of heart. Um, you're reminding me of what St. Paul says, to the pure, all things are pure. Mm. So even in these expressions of these people's hearts, where their hearts are, are twisted up, purity of heart is able to see the good thing in there that got mm. twisted up. And, mm -hmm. and I come back to this again and again and again as a teacher. Uh, it's the principle, you've heard me say it a gamillion times, you can fill in the blank here. The devil doesn't have... His own clay. His own clay, right? And we often give evil too much weight mm. by failing to recognize what evil actually is and what it isn't. Mm -hmm. When we say the devil doesn't have his own clay, it means all evil is, is evil gets a hold of God's good clay and mm -hmm. <laughs> twists it up. Mm -hmm. But the pure of heart, and this is what you're testifying to, even when something is presented that's twisted up, the pure of heart can see the good thing in there that got twisted up and can tease it back out. Mm -hmm. And that's beautiful evangelization. Because mm. the person who is twisted up there, if they go through the process of allowing the Lord's light into what is twisted up, Everything they genuinely desired the whole time gets affirmed. Yeah. Even though there is a death we have to pass through to rediscover who we really are. And this and you had a, another very good insight there that you were saying it's art that is looking at a real problem but giving a wrong solution. Is that yeah. how you said it? Yeah. And this is how we always recognize the enemy. He tries to give us a solution that Without bypasses the cross. the cross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what this whole woke agenda is. Mm -hmm. It's looking at a real human problem. We're all confused about what it means to be male and female in mm -hmm. this world mm -hmm. to some degree, one degree or another. And the solution that the culture is holding out to that very real wound mm -hmm. is a detour, a bypass around the cross. Right. And whenever a solution to a real human problem is held out to us without the cross, we should respond with Christ's response to Peter get behind me satan the mm -hmm. only solution to all of our problems is to pass through the paschal mystery of christ's death and resurrection mm -hmm. and and real art shows that path yes and your yes. your art powerfully beautifully mm -hmm. points that direction can can you take us there with this yeah, does, is think, this next piece yeah, a good doorway a good, into I think that it is pull up um candid conversation thomas so this is a bit of a smaller illustration. This is one that lives in the sketchbook, um, but it's meaningful to me and a good thing to share. So there's two, like it's a two part that mm -hmm. Thomas has put next side by side for us here. Um, and these are just little, 
so so sometimes my art is like big things and sometimes it's little windows and glimpses of the interior life and this is just about honesty so it's something that I think it, it ties in well to what we were just speaking about because it's like this came for me from um dealing with certain wounds in my life that I didn't want to look at or talk about mm -hmm. and my solution was just to kind of nix it let's not talk about it let's not think about it let's not right. reveal it either to myself or to the people in my life who I need to find healing with I'm just gonna not do that work um which is so easy we yes. fall into it all the time bypass the cross yep. <laughs> yeah um so yeah so this it was particular to this experience because what I really needed to do to work through these wounds was to heal a relationship in my life and the way and I had been for so long just silent and so that's why there's like this duct tape on the mouth image mm -hmm. um and then there's just a lot of I think angel intercession in my life that was leading me to be have the grace to start uh, talking and that's why I called it a candid conversation like we're gonna actually look at I'm gonna look at myself and I'm gonna be vulnerable with the people who need to hear wow. about the real pain that I've experienced and the real wounds that I haven't dealt with and that have been festering inside me dang girl <laughs> that's deep business that yeah. is that is some deep deep business uh, so the image on the left hand side is like okay I'm gonna peel it off um, and there's certain there's a certain like surrealness to the face of like okay here we go I'm just gonna and the corner starts coming off and then the second image on the right hand side is like oh my gosh it's gone oh my <laughs> gosh <laughs> like, oh my gosh my walls I my closed yeah. doors they're gone it's unlocked oh my word so so in the taking <laughs> off of the tape you you put your hand on yeah, it's like, oh it's my like gosh. i'm taking a step but uh, yeah exactly it's like it's like hand over the mouth in shock and also hand over the mouth and like oh my gosh do i actually have to talk about this right like, do we are right. you sure maybe let's just not let's uh, like really <laughs> like huh. so, so right there that's such a powerful illustration of everything we've been saying about what art is mm. right there's no one on the planet who can't relate once this is explained mm -hmm. to the experience you are conveying in your art, right. an interior experience we all have where there's stuff inside that we just don't want to look at, we're afraid to look at it, um, especially in relationships where we mm -hmm. think, if I bring this out into the light, maybe this relationship will be threatened. Right. And we're like, uh-uh, not nope. going to do it. Nope. <laughs> I mean, I know married couples in the work I do, Obviously, people speak to me about their, their life struggle. No couple's been married 30, 40 years, and there's stuff mm. just hidden in there that they, so they, they don't talk about and won't talk about it. And I know it in my own marriage, um, the struggle, the fear that you have to work through to, okay, we have to talk about this. So there's not a person on the planet who can't relate to this image. Mm -hmm. And that fear of, okay, now it's off, but oh crap, how, where do I even go from here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So is there a, is there a, a trilogy here? Like, there is there a third is a panel? Trilogy. Oh, Thomas, if you give me my phone, I can send it to you. There is actually a trilogy. Because it seems to me like we're, we're right in the middle of a story here. That... <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, and you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I, w I want to see it come to, yeah. it does it come to a conclusion or? We'll see what it comes oh, to. We'll see what it comes uh... to. <laughs> um, give me a moment, but hey, while you're looking up that, where yes. can people learn more about you? Oh yeah, great question. Okay, so you can learn more about me on. I have an Instagram, and my handle is at Beth underscore Rose underscore Art. Um, Beth underscore Rose underscore Art. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, all people. I'm so uh, great. Uh, what? Oh, a prince? Um, oh, you can find my prince, some prints of um, some of the artwork we're sharing at the Theology of the Body Institute website. Um, and then I need to, it's a goal of mine to set up a website of my own where I can sell my own prints. But basically any of my artwork that you see on Instagram, I share artwork, I share dance, and I share poetry on Instagram. I'm also... Did you say it's a goal of mine to set up? To set up a... I yeah. thought you said it's a gold mine. No, 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 and no, no, like... no, 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 no. Oh it's a gosh. goal of mine. Yes. It's a goal well, of mine. Well, maybe it would be a gold mine. Uh, I mean, your, your art speaks to hearts, so. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, but I'm not much of a businesswoman. But anyways, um, it's a goal of mine to be able to sell more of my own prints. But at this point, I can get um, people prints of any of my artwork. I have high quality versions of them. I have printer a printer who I work with and I can send them out. So And this is a great bridge to talk about the fact that you do commissions. I do. I do commissions. Um, did you get my painting, Thomas? There's Thomas. Hi, Thomas. <laughs> did you get my painting? I did, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, do you want to talk about commissions or do you want to talk about this third part of our trilogy? Where do you want to go? Let's do the third part of the trilogy and then... Go to commissions? Yeah. Okay, pull it up, Thomas. I guess we should use the term that JP2 uses here what for he sacred use? art when it has three different... Triduum? No. No. Triduum is the... Is the liturgical... Liturgical term for mm -hmm. the three liturgies of Holy Week. Uh, no, triptych. Ooh. The triptych. Okay. So... Three different panels, each telling a part of an overall story. So yes. let's go to the third panel of... <laughs> oh, the suspense. <laughs> Beth underscore Rose underscore Art. Yeah, what you got? Third panel of the triptych. Here we go. It's coming. It's, there it is. Oh, it's really big. you got it, Thomas. <laughs> size it down Thanks, Thomas. There she is. Okay, so, so tell us about this, Beth. So uh, the idea being... Um, once the the layers came off of my silence is gone mm -hmm. and then once i start actually talking about this you uncover the real hurt and so there's a last like layer oh, coming off, off uncovering a broken heart oh wow and then and then the real hurt is exposed and and there's peace there's a peacefulness in the posture of like Okay, now now it's time to feel this thing because the silence comes from I don't want to feel it, and right, then once right, right. I'm not going to be silent anymore, I'm going to get over all my fears that wants to keep this hidden, and then once it actually is expressed, then I have to experience it. Okay, again, this is deep, deep stuff, um, and and I I want to draw the connection between this and the previous work of art, the bridegroom in the mm, garden. Yeah, because. In my own experience of looking at stuff I need to look at, I simply can't do it if Jesus isn't leading it. Yes, 100%. And, and to, to go in there and peel stuff away and think that you can solve your own problem Ooh, looking yeah, at... Uh -uh. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> this, is, this is the fruit, again, of your prayer life, mm. of knowing that Jesus is in those wounds yeah. with you. Yeah. That's the only thing that can allow that duct tape, so to speak, mm -hmm. to go with this imagery, to get peeled off. Mm -hmm. Christ went first in, in yes. allowing his heart to be pierced and wounded. Yes. And it's only in our relationship with him, in union with his own wounding, that we can then expose yeah. our wounds. Can you speak into yeah. that a little bit? No, that's, you're so right. And I you that's a concept you've taught me is like... Jesus is present in our suffering and suffering is an opportunity for unity with Christ. That's a bedrock principle that you've communicated to me and it has borne remarkable fruit in my life. And Thanks I speak to God. Yeah. Um, it is surprising to me when I take my experiences to prayer to see how particularly the Lord understands them. Um, and I have many parts of my journaling that's precious to me of me realizing oh what i'm experiencing so clearly parallels to some aspect of the life of christ or of the crucifixion and this like if it's like aching in like say a lost relationship it's like <sighs> the lord experienced love for people who left him and the lord wants us to respond to his love and we don't sometimes mm. and that hurts and 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 my when i love people in my life and it hurts to love people that's only a glimpse of how much the lord wow. loves that person wow. right wow. and so in such surprisingly particular ways um it is a parallel and, and not just a parallel that's a weak word it's a an echo of Christ's own experience and he's so present to me in in the particularities of whatever I'm going through and I I've had times of asking the Lord like 
oh, when the nails were driven in your hands, did it feel like this? When mm. the third one mm. go, when the third one went in, were you so in so much agony that you were numb to the pain? Like when you like when they hammered it, were you oh. what did you feel towards these people? And it's like this parallel to my life of like whatever wounding is going on in my life. I'm like, Lord, when you were hanging on the cross and you said, forgive them, they know not what they do. Like, did you ache in this way that I'm aching now? And just like asking, did you feel this? Did you feel this? Did you feel this? Like <clears throat> describing my own pain to the Lord and being like, when you were crucified, did you feel this? And and finding him there, I am always astounded. And that comes to me through art because my mind thinks in art. And when I feel things, I can connect them to this is my these are the nails in my hands metaphorically not to not to elevate my suffering to something that it's not but just to draw a parallel to the way that the lord wants to speak yes, to me yes i don't hear you elevating your suffering to something that it's not i hear you encountering the crucified christ in your own sufferings and that is what you could call like a living rosary mm, like it's the yeah. sorrowful mysteries are not in in the way you're describing your experience. The sorrowful mysteries are a lived experience for you, mm. and I'm reminded of what Saint Paul says that we we carry in our body, mm -hmm. in our own yes, lives, <laughs> the death of the Lord. Yes. Why? So that the life of the Lord might also be manifested yes. in our bodies. Yes. And we're back to what you were saying earlier about the art of your fellow college students looking at genuine problems but not finding the genuine yes, solution. Yes. To find the genuine solution, we have to carry the death of the Lord in our yes, body. Yes. And then the life of the Lord will also be manifested in our bodies. Yes. When we don't see that as the solution, the Paschal Mystery, as the solution to our real human problems, we start to come up with our own solutions to our mm -hmm. own problems. Mm -hmm. Instead of turning to faith, we turn to uh, science. Not that science in itself is is problematic, but when we use science to control, to control say. or contradict yeah. our own humanity, mm -hmm. or even to try to erase our real humanity, which is what so many young people are doing with these sex change surgeries. They're they're using technology and, and so-called science to cancel out. Yeah. They are suffering in their bodies. What they don't know is that in that suffering, that, that rupture of, of identity, what they don't know is that they are carrying in their body the death of the Lord. Yeah. And if they yeah. would stay the course in carrying that yeah. death of the Lord in their body, they would also have the life of the Lord manifested in their body bodies and they want that and they want it and they, they want it. and they yes. think they've found it and i see that in this art like i see especially with dance because dance is let me show you with my body yes, the suffering yes, that i'm yes, feeling yes, in my body yes, yes, right so you yes. sit and watch a dance about people who don't want to be what they are and and they're showing with their bodies the hurt the of their bodies yes, yes, that they yes. don't love yes and then they think that they just they're just they're just barely off like yep, i just yep. like it's a fatal skew but yep, then yep. the solution they provide they they want it to be the truth it's like and i just see and it's not and that's heartbreaking yep. but they they want it and that honest like i'm hurting and i want the truth and i want the resurrection and they don't know what the resurrection is but they want it and yep. i see that and i just it's beautiful art. Yeah. It's beautiful art. In as much as it genuinely expresses the real yes, pain yes. of the human experience, it's, it's genuine art. Yes. And in that sense, it's beautiful. Yes. It's it, beautiful in the same sense that a crucifix is beautiful. Yes. It's, it's, it's the suffering of the human condition. But they have to keep going. You have to keep going. Keep going. You can't keep, stay going. Stuck. keep going. Keep yeah. going. Keep going. Keep going into the resurrection. Into yes. resurrection yes. is yes. real. Yes. <laughs> the Passover is real. That's that's maybe a way to look at it. It's it's art that doesn't pass over. Yes. But there there there's a journey there, and and I'm reminded of a an Eastern theologian I really have come to respect. His name is Dr. Timothy Petitsis. And he says, all this suffering we're seeing in sex change operations and 
uh, grotesque piercings all over and uh, you know, there's one thing like tasteful piercings. Like I, I believe you have tasteful piercings. Thank you. <laughs> um, in fact, did you see just in today's reading? Mm-hmm. What? I'm sorry. I'm Go ahead. I have to pull it out because I, it, I thought of you. Oh, I thanks. Of my girl. Oh, I don't have my Magnificat. I oh, thought I did. What have you done? But in the first reading from the prophet Ezekiel, it's it's Yahweh seeing uh, Israel, mm-hmm. uh, Jerusalem, his as his bride. And it says he covers her in jewels, and one of the jewels is a ring in her nose. Aww. And I thought of you. <laughs> oh, thanks. That's anyway, sweet. so anyway, sidetrack back back on track. Uh, the <laughs> grotesque piercings, the grotesque tattooing, where where people get disfigured. Yes. And the sex change surgeries and and cutting uh, all this. Just Dr. Timothy Petitsis, this Eastern theologian, says this is all of creation groaning as in labor pains yes. for what paul says this is romans chapter 8 this is people groaning in labor pains for the redemption of their bodies yes yes and that prayer is honest and real and it will be heard can i show you a piece of art please do pop or thomas can you pull up the one i just sent to you yeah. you take your time there you go this is, because you're talking about the redemption and the resurrection, yes. this is a little drawing of mine of glimpses of that. Because we don't get there till heaven, but there are glimpses, and um, preach this it, is preach one. It. So I call this one flowers from wounds. So mm, in the last mm, mm. Um, last image, we saw that broken heart with the duct tape coming off, and yes. broken heart is something I, I mean, it's an easy image, and it's something I draw on a lot. Uh, in this image, there's flowers growing from the broken slash in the heart wow. there's flowers growing out and then in the shoulder as well this comes from my own um prayer life and just an image that has worked for me of like like i talked about like feeling like this wound is the nail in my hand yes and then an image of not dealing with that wound is chopping off my arm because <laughs> that that wound is what nails me to the cross i'd rather not feel that so i'm just gonna chop my arm off and you have I, an image of that i too. do have an can image you of that. can you yes i can send that to thomas send that to thomas um, uh, and then this is the flowers growing from it. Hang on. Um. In that idea of flowers growing mm-hmm. from wounds, it's let's just go with that image. Like to plant something, you have to put a furrow in the soil. The soil has to be broken open, mm. and and there's there's a wound there. Yeah. And that open wound is what allows the seed to be planted. Yes. And then grow. It's a powerful, powerful mm-hmm. image. So we have that piercing of the heart that is an opening, which we're back to the <laughs> the bridegroom in the garden, mm-hmm. right? Your Everything open goes back heart there. Yeah. and Christ coming in uh, with his loving presence. And he is the word and the word is the seed. Mm-hmm. The seed is the word. And it falls on fertile ground. Fal- falls on fertile ah! ground when your heart is open. <laughs> and then you, you bear that beautiful harvest. That's... It's kind of all coming together there. Kind of is all coming together. Um, the parables, <laughs> the whoa. art. La. Here's a uh, amputation. Okay. That's what I call this one, amputation. We have to, uh, we're not size quite seeing, down. yeah, size it down if you can. Thanks everybody for bearing with our YouTube yeah. live and how this all goes. Oh, there it is. There you go. So that's, uh, yeah, let me just chop my arm off, then I won't be on the cross. Talk okay, about so this is this is the culture, right? Visceral. Let me just let this me just is, chop it. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, this is a little graphic. Sorry, but that's what. No, no, no. It feels I don't. Like. I don't want you to apologize. I, but I, I want. This is what I love about your art. It's honest, mm-hmm. and a lot of so-called Christian art, I put it in quotes, is is dishonest, mm. in as much as. It's trying to pretty things up, yeah. and then it's Christian. Yeah. Following Jesus, if we're really following Jesus, where does he go? He goes to Calvary. Yeah. That yeah. <laughs> means if we're really following Jesus, it's going to be, on occasion, it's going to be a bloody mess. <laughs> yes. And, and we need honesty in our art that mm-hmm. shows the bloody mess that following Jesus is is at times and i believe that's what you're getting at can you yes can you speak into this what is what is what's going on here with the imagery so, of, of the chopped arm yeah so it's it's the like i was saying the wound and the the nail mark is what's holding you to your cross right and it's just 
I don't know, it's the right arm still hanging on the cross, and then the image is that she's chopped herself off. There's a bandage over her shoulder. You can't see the, the like, banded, the band wounded shoulder it's just yeah. like bandage and there's like blood on the bandage and then and then she's covering her face in shame of like i don't want to see what i've done i don't want to see that i have th- um, abandoned myself and and amputated my experience and that's just that just comes from my interior like things that i felt that hurt that i didn't want to deal with i'll just be like oh i'm gonna get over that now chop chop um and it's yeah in those yeah. moments where we're listening to those voices mm-hmm. you come down off that cross yes yes you, and she's down off the cross right because what held her to the cross was her wound which she's now i'm down off the cross i don't have half my body but at least i'm not hanging on the cross anymore right and what an image i think you yeah, were about to make this I know. connection yeah it's with, like i'm chopping myself off because with this the whole is sex what, change yeah, surgery yeah yeah Woo. yeah and i don't want to look at it and now i'm yeah. gonna you know Jesus, give us the courage to look at your crucified body yes, Lord. and to be with you in it, to carry, give us the courage, Lord, to carry in our bodies your death with the assurance that we will also carry in our bodies your resurrection. Yes, Lord. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Flowers from Wounds, Thomas, real quick. Because I want people to see this after seeing that amputation. Yeah, flowers. Yeah, we got to go from the and from then, the amputation to flowers and then from to wounds. Pursuit, then yes. oh. then we're gonna take a potty break. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then we'll come back. We'll come back and talk pull about up, your pull dance. Pull flowers. Pull flowers from wounds, Thomas. Okay. I want people to see that. Oh yeah, you take your time. But just just to see that there's an there's an end because we saw that we saw that image of the broken heart, which I pull out in lots of different paintings I do, and that particular image of like this amputated arm. Um, which, by the way, I had someone give me a crazy insight, Papa. Mm. One of your students, um, I had been sharing about this, like, um, this idea that this, like, woundedness, this wound in the shoulder and the flowers yes, coming out yes. of it. Um, which comes up in your dance that we're yes, going to look at later, too. Mm-hmm. And I had been talking about that and saying, I'm not exactly sure why that was the image that came to me. It just worked for me for whatever reason. And someone told me, I think it was from Padre Pio that someone at because he bore the stigmata right like he felt physically the wounds of christ and someone some story of padre pio someone asked him which of the wounds of christ hurts the most Mm. and he said it's the shoulder where i carried the cross wow and i was like wow because you've had this experience in your own prayer of Uh, of, just yeah just like like a a symbolic woundedness in my shoulder shoulder. that just like that image just kind of worked for me and that's the image uh from the amputation, and then also that comes the flowers up, from wounds. The flowers Can from we wounds. bring that one up, Thomas? Flowers from wounds. Yeah. Beth, tell us before we go to our bathroom break. Mm-hmm. Tell us about your commissions. That- oh yes. So this is a joyful part of my life. Is that I? So this thing that I do that we've been talking about, where I take something invisible and put it to paint, um, is something I have been so blessed to be able to do not only for myself but also for others. Um, and a lot of this has come from your students and also from people I just know in my life, friends who know of my art, that they um, have asked me to express something for them, which I do. And it's been a bit of a like private business, little mini business of mine, mm-hmm. which has been really, really cool. Um, and yeah, it depends. Sometimes people... Um, it's maybe a simpler thing like, I just want a picture of pregnant Mary, or I want a picture of Christ in fellowship with his disciples. Um, and I love painting those. And sometimes it's more particular to the person and I'll have kind of a, a conversation, um, with whoever wants a painting. And we just talk about their interior and their experiences and wherever the Lord has been leading them that they want to have an image of usually like it's just a beautiful documentation of your life it's it's really therapeutic for yes, me to yes. see my experiences um and it's a lot of release and peace and just an aid to growth and and um just a good thing was your piece of mary as the spouse of the holy spirit was that a commission it was a commission can yes. we can we look at that and then we'll go to our bathroom break sure sure yeah. Let's let's take a look. Here it is. Yeah. So, so Mary, spouse of the Holy Spirit. This was a friend of mine who. This would be more an example of less of someone's own interior and more of someone's interpretation of um, the spiritual world or some aspect of it. And, mm-hmm. and he just has a devotion to Mary as the spouse of the Holy Spirit and wanted 
a particular image of that. So you'll see lots of mandorlas, like we talked about before. There's a mandorla on her womb, Beautiful. and there's a mandorla around her. Um, there's Just like our, our Lady of Guadalupe is yeah. a mandorla around her. Yeah. Powerful. And there's the dove representing the Holy Spirit, and then also this kind of swirling fire that's um, entering the mandorla over her womb, and that's the spousal imagery, the conception of the Lord, the spouse of the Holy Spirit. Oof. And then behind her, there's um, flaming leaves, which is an image meant to hearken to the burning bush that Mary Powerful. Mary is. Which reminds me of a quote from the Catechism that yeah. Mary is the burning bush of the definitive theophany. <laughs> so theophany means manifestation of God in this world, mm -hmm. right? So Mary, the burning bush of the definitive theophany, the definitive manifestation of God in this world comes through the child in Mary's womb because mm -hmm. Mary opens as spouse of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Powerful stuff, powerful yeah. stuff. If someone wanted to commission you yes. to make visible an invisible aspect of their own interior life, how, how would they go about it? You go and you follow me on Instagram at Beth underscore Rose underscore art, or I guess you don't really need to follow me, just DM me. Um, give me a direct message on Instagram, say, hey, I'm interested in a commission, and I'll say, oh my gosh, that's awesome, let's chat. And then we go from there. Great. Um, the only thing I ask is patience because it takes a while to, I want to make quality my And standard. it comes from your own prayer yeah, life. You yeah, take, so I have to sit with it yeah. for a little while. So it's not a super fast production, also combined with the fact that I'm like a college student and, you know, this isn't my full-time job. So it's not something I can turn out quickly, but... Um, but it is something I take very seriously. So if you genuinely want a commission, you will get one. I promise. Beautiful. <laughs> um, Beautiful. I do. I take it very seriously. I'm very intentional with each piece and with each person who trusts me with their um, vision. I love working with people. So yeah, just DM me and we'll set up a phone meeting or we can just chat over the internet, whatever you prefer. It depends on how complicated the piece is too. Um, and then I have different options for prices and sizing and and all sorts Great. of things and we will get into all those details but yeah very easy just reach out to me and i'm so excited all right we're going to take a five minute bathroom break and when we come back we're going to talk about a dance that mm -hmm. beth choreographed we're going to show you the dance beth is then going to talk about what the imagery in the dance means and then we'll watch it again with new eyes so we'll see you back here in five minutes Thank you. 
Well, we are back. Yay. I said five minute break. It was two minutes. But it was a two minute break. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. That means you don't have to miss us for very long. <laughs> <laughs> we are back. So are there any other uh, prints or paintings you want to show us oh. before we go to your dance? Uh, just one other thing before the dance to say is that um, I realize not everybody has Instagram. So that was like the first thing that came to my mind when you asked how to get in touch with me. I also right. have a business email, which both my Instagram and my business email will be in the show notes, thanks to our lovely producer. Um, but my email is rose.bethwest at gmail.com. If you can also... Rose dot... Beth West. Beth West. At gmail.com. At gmail.com. Yeah. And you can uh, make commission inquiries there. Um, I'm also open to dance commissions, by the way. Um, and we're going to go into a dance here. Do you want to go right into the dance? Or I'm, is there I'm good to go into the dance. Good yeah. to go into the dance. Okay, so do you want to frame it up before we watch it, or should we just watch uh, it and then talk about it? What do you think? Do you want to watch it cold? Yeah, I, let's watch it cold. Watch it cold. Then talk about it, and mm -hmm. then we'll watch it again. Sounds good. All right, so here is your dance called... Pursuit. Pursuit. I want to share with our viewers that at our courses here at the Theology of the Body Institute, we, we love to show little video clips, movie clips, as you know. And I started recently showing this to our students. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll first show it, just like we did here. And then I show a little video of you explaining it. Mm -hmm. And then I show it again. And several students have shared with me how powerful 
this art is to their own hearts. Mm. But there are a lot of people out there like me <laughs> who the first time I saw it, I was like, it's beautiful. I know a lot's going on, but I don't really understand the meaning of it. Mm -hmm. And then when you, when you unpack the meaning of it for our students in the little video that you made for us, it, the whole thing just breaks open. And, and I, I'd love for you to take us through that journey yeah. of the meaning of the, the dance, what's mm -hmm. going on, and then we'll watch it again. And I'm sure, as with our students, you guys are going to, once she explains what's going on here and we watch it again, boom, it's going to pop. <laughs> so, so tell us about some of your process yeah. to get to this place where you, mm -hmm. you saw this, you, you felt something in your heart, you wanted to convey it in dance. Take us through the process and then maybe through some of the symbolisms. Yeah, so I actually, the title Pursuit was not the original title that I created the work under. I think Pursuit is the right title, but originally as, I, as this idea was forming in my head, the name of it was Christ in a Soul. Mm, so mm. it's like the whole journey of life with Christ in all its different stages conveyed through a dance. So you're compacting into yeah. a, like a two and a half or three minute three dance, mm -hmm. the whole journey of life. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. That's what art can do. Yeah. That's the power of art. You can do it. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. And I think you have. Oh, so, thank you. so walk us through it. So we begin with, I mean, there's some obvious things just in the setup of um that humanity is feminine and god is masculine in the dance and that's can i speak into yeah, that a speak little into bit that. So, Go ahead. so in the spousal imagery for all of you familiar with theology of the body this is review but in the spousal image imagery of the scriptures god is always the bridegroom and humanity is always the bride and that's because this is love saint john tells us not that we first loved god but that he first loved us us first pursued us ah, ah. <laughs> so that puts all of us as creatures in the posture of feminine open receptivity to god's pursuit mm -hmm. and i always say to my my fellow men males out there guys if the bridal imagery throws you off uh, the the goal here is receptivity mm -hmm. so Here's another image that gets you in the same posture. Jesus is the quarterback, and we are the wide receivers, right? <laughs> so if you need that kind of imagery to get to the same place, fine. The idea is to be in a posture of receptivity. So right. that's the imagery. Yes. You represent all of humanity mm -hmm. here. You're the or a particular a soul. particular soul. I'd say it's can a we also? Soul. It's more a particular I soul. I mean, it's than, also all of humanity. Yeah, but I think it's meant to express something a personal. Particular personal interior journey. Got it. Um, and then also the, when the colors come in, you can see the woman is wearing a blue dress and the man has a red shirt and that is a symbol in sacred art, yes, of that red is divinity and blue is humanity. So that's just another little thing thrown in there. So the man represents Christ, woman represents the woman represents humanity or a or soul, a soul yeah. on a journey. Mm -hmm. And then there's this veil. So the immediate thing you notice is that the woman's blindfolded. So that's just like, um that's what life is like <laughs> you just can't um you don't see what the lord is doing you know there's also we don't see the tapestry of life until we get to heaven and there's just so much of life is being led through the darkness um not knowing we're just we're creatures and god's thoughts are above our thoughts and and that image just fits to me of we're we're blind and christ is leading us and do we let him or do we not and how do you trust someone who you can't see and who you don't know and when everything is just scary? Yeah. Um, so this is kind of that journey. So then if I'm like walking through it kind of step by step. But there's also, there's a bridal symbolism to yes, the veil yes, as the well. Yes, yes, the veil is also white. It's a bridal veil. So the way that the the bride remains um, covered and, and removed, there's something between the bride and her bridegroom until the wedding which we'll get to later in the video. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, there's a bridal image. It's the image of blindness and also image of kind of a garden enclosed. Um, so the opening scene, she's alone. Um, and this is kind of a soul in, 
in she's closed off and like kind of almost like in the fetal position of like there's threat around me um when there, yeah just voices it's just it's dark i don't see anything life is confusing life hurts i'm suffering um i don't know this is just what my interior life was like when i was just kind of a really really anxious 13 year old or 14 year old or whatever and i just was just closed in like a really dark place and the lord pursued me in that place and came to find me there and so that's the opening image and he um i mean it's I wish it could say more. I wish you could see, like, if this were on a stage, sometimes I imagine it on a stage, and she's all the way in the one corner of the stage, and he has to travel the mm. whole length mm-hmm. of the stage to get to her, mm-hmm. um, and travels to pursue and to find her, and then the first movement of the dance is this, the male figure does this big, like, sweeping, protective stance. Um, and when I was giving direction to the performer I was working with, I told him, I want you to imagine that you are staring down every demon in hell. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Just stare them down and be like, this one's mine. Woo-hoo! Go away. <laughs> and yeah. that's that first, like, she's mine. <laughs> awesome. So the first movement is protective. So she's still on the floor. She's still on the floor, doesn't know anything that's going and on. And he's, he's putting like... He's putting this yes. protective yeah. covering over her mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. staring down all the demons yes. of hell saying, she's mine. She's awesome. mine, yeah. And then the music shifts. So that's kind of the introductory music. The music shifts and becomes much more tender. And that's when he's now switches orientation and he's focused on her. And then just the tenderness and the kindness with which, like, we're like a scared deer sometimes before yes, the yes, Lord, right? Yes. Like, we're just skittish and 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 ignorant and... Um, and just move away from every touch. So he just, you know, gently touches her and she moves away. He tries to look at her and she moves away. And there's just this, like, his movements are very tender. And when you watch, um, this performer was really talented and, like, watch his facial expressions because that, like, tenderness and attentiveness and joy when she's open and then patience when she's oh, closed. Beautiful. Um, and then there's just kind of this back and forth. She stands up. He helps her up, but she still remains close to him. Um, and then eventually he holds out his hand and she takes it. And it's important to note it's her choice, right? He doesn't like, like there's a lot of him reaching out and her pulling away, pulling right. away. But eventually when she does open, his hand is waiting for It's that like I knock on the door of yes. your heart. Yes. And you can open to me if you choose to, right? So she eventually chooses to turn around and okay, I'll take your hand. Um, and then the color starts to come on. Uh, this was actually an insight by our very talented producer. My brother Thomas produced this video for me and it was his um, little artistic, like wonderful instinct to to do this color grading. So we start, the color becomes more saturated the more open she is. Mm, mm. Um, so we start in this black and white, and then once she takes his hand and their actual relationship starts, the color starts to come back. Um, and then, so the idea is once she takes his hand, now they can interact with each other. And once, remember back to like, once the duct tape is off, we see yes. that there's just the, the hurt. Yes. And once the, once the walls are down, we see I'm just suffering. So once she takes his hand and okay, I'll, I'll talk to you. It's revealed I was just suffering. And so then I, I did, I directly used that image of the wounded shoulder, kind of because it's convenient for a dance. Like, you know, a shoulder is a body part I can work with in mm-hmm. choreography. So she does this like aching movement of my shoulders wounded. And that's just like where I like localize this idea of I'm hurt. Um, and that's why I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you because I'm just in pain. Right. And she like, um, has this aching in her shoulder and he tries to, to put his hand on it and she pushes him away. Like, don't touch me. Don't touch my pain. I don't want you to be a part of this. Um, and then he moves with her in like, let me, like, like what you're talking about, right? Like Christ is with us in our suffering. So he's like, let me touch this hurt. No, you can't touch this hurt. I'm going to move with you. Um, and feel this with you and then we return to that same posture where he's like let me put my hand on your woundedness and she lets him so that's just a little motif is there is there a moment in the dance where 
she overcomes that fear to let him touch the wound? Yeah, it's it's through the the moving together. There's just this brief motif where they kind of are their movements mirror one another and happen so together. So she's learning Christ is with me. Yes, yeah, she's learning Christ is with me. And now I'll let you touch my woundedness. Woo. And then and then it keeps going. It's not over. That's like one thing, but there are so many hurdles, right? So then after that, um, ju, ju, ju. yeah, then she goes into, we hit this um, foot of the cross motif. So she curls down and he opens into cruciform. And there's this little moment where it's someone's at the foot of the cross. And then he invites her to the cross with him. So come experience my suffering with me. Come be in union with me as I hang on the cross, which is what Jesus invites us to when we feel suffering in our life, which we talked about earlier, right? Um, Can I make an yeah. observation? Mm -hmm. Just watching you recall the dance to explain it, when you just went do, 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 I realized this dance is still in your body. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Talk about that a little oh, bit. Oh, about how dance is in your body. It's in like you. You have a muscle memory yeah. of the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how to. Ex that's just what dance is like. You just. It's kind of like how you can't um, like remember which letter the alphabet is next without singing the whole ABCs. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that was the do do do. Yeah, that was the do do do. Right. Um, oh, that makes total sense. To yeah, me. yeah. It's like, um, I mean, that's why. I could go on a whole rant about how dance is, because this whole time we've been talking about how, you know, the parallels between the theology of the body and the mission of art and like our art, our, sorry, my words, <laughs> our bodies are God's art. Yes. And our yes. artisticness is us being made in the image of God. Yes. Because God is an artist. Yes. And we're in his image. So therefore we have to make art and we are his art. And the art we make is using his art to make art. It's awesome. like meta art. It's just Woo! like, and there's something so T.O.B. about dance. So, so let me just say again what you said to see if I'm tracking. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit of a tongue twister. <laughs> so God is the ultimate artist. Yes. His masterpiece is the human body. Yes. So the human body is already God's work of art. Yes. Dance is that form of art where we get to use our freedom mm -hmm. as persons, bodied, embodied persons, using God's masterwork of art, which is the body, mm -hmm. to become a work of art. Yes. Is that, yes. Did I say that And correct? not only is God's masterwork of art the body, but God's masterwork of art is the human person because the human person is in his image. And that is why we make art. Because God makes art and we're in his image, so therefore we make art and and dance is very stripped because yeah. it's just you it's just the body the is body the medium is the medium yeah and there's something about that that's just it's a profoundly limited art form honestly like there's a lot of limitations but it's also incredibly good for abstraction and for things that cannot be said in words or in image it is a visual art right because you have to watch dance but but it's a movement art it's not it's not a still visual right, it's a right. the art isn't the visual the art is the transition and the motion mm -mm. and that is like so like this dance is is honestly is different in that the images i'm breaking open for you how each of the images kind of has a particular meaning and that's something you can do in dance and i often do of like this pose means something particular to me. Right. But a lot of the time, it's just, this is just like what my body does when I feel this way. Like when music turns on and you just have to yes, move. Yes, you have to move, You're right. It's like that, but developed and taken to other emotions. Because right. usually that's like, oh, it's an upbeat song. I just have to move to it. But if you take that instinct to like, here's this feeling I have mm, to move, mm. take that to complex emotions Ooh. and to hurt and to so that's where we are in the dance with your shoulder yes is that hurt is that that yeah. deep emo that's a that's a that's a very important insight you're sharing mm -hmm. and i can relate to it I, I remember getting to a point in my life where music music was kind of entertainment for me uh for a long time i didn't it did touch deep places in my heart ever since i was a little kid but i didn't know what was really going on but i remember becoming more conscious of it later in life that wow music taps these emotions yeah and what you're saying is dance can 
express those same mm-hmm. deep emotions. Yeah, it's that I have to move feeling. Yeah. Because we, like you were saying earlier, we hold in our bodies the wounds of Christ. And that's a real thing. So real. Like we hold trauma in our bodies. Yeah, yeah. We experience everything bodily. Right. And even though we can be disconnected from our bodies in daily life, like you still, everything you feel and everything you take in and your whole life, you experienced it with this body. You right. know, that's how you experienced it. That's where the emotion went. And so dance, I think people who love dance love it because it let me this this sponge that soaked up Ooh, my experiences let me let me ring, ring it, it out, out. whoa <laughs> like, what an image yeah wow with the very not with a different medium I and mean, there's so much profound i'm not to downplay any other form of art like i love all forms of art but there is something particular about dance because it's like you know all of that's ringing out the sponge i'm gonna write a song that's mm-hmm. how i'm gonna ring out the sponge mm-hmm. i'm gonna paint something that's how i'm gonna i'm gonna speak whatever it is that you get your feelings out with that's you ringing out your sponge but like when your sponge is your sponge <laughs> when right. your sponge right. is the body right like when i have a rough week which happens and you go in the studio and you just turn on whatever song you're vibing with right now and you just move that's therapy. It's so it's therapy. It's amazing. It's the best. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Um, and then it's a cathartic release. Um, so that's yeah, a little. So keep going with the yeah, symbolism yeah. So of the dance. The we're we're the at dance. the shoulder where you're letting Christ yes. touch the wound. And then after we have like resolution to that, then um, he invites her to. He goes to the cross. He shows her like this is where I go, and then invites her to come, come with me to the cross. And he like picks her up and. Um, first he stretches out her, what was it? Yeah. First her left hand, which was the, the, not the one with the wound. So that opens. And then when he goes to stretch out her right hand, which had been wounded, right, right. she runs away. I don't want to open that onto the cross. Wow. She runs away from him. He asks, he, he pursues her. He asks again, first the left arm, then the right arm. No, I don't want to feel that. And then the third time he invites her to the cross, the third time he asks her to open this. It's like, this is your wound. Now let that be parallel to my wound on the cross like take that like first we had this let jesus into your wound and now it's let your wound be christ's wound you know so now we're transitioning so then he's okay let me take your hand the third time he asks she allows him to open her onto the cross and they well i was gonna say they look at each other she still has a blindfold on but there's a moment of them being there together and then the dance keeps moving and then she falls. So she, she like you hold that. That's what life's like, right? Like you have a moment where it's like, yes, yes, I'm in union with Christ on the cross. And then, and that's not the end. And then you right, keep, right. you know, you keep falling. So then she, she falls and then there's this falling motif. She falls three times. So she falls off the cross. He picks her up. She falls again. He catches her. She falls again. He picks her up a third time. Each time he's picking her up, he asks her to, trust him and each time she runs away Mm. she falls she falls she falls the third time he picks her up the third time and says take my hands and she takes them and then the color comes on full and they begin to dance in harmony with each other so when you're when you're yeah life is a dance and and jesus is your dance partner and he's leading you and what's so beautiful is um when you dance with someone who knows how to, and when I say dance, like like partner dancing, like I've done some swing dancing um, and I've been so blessed by going to just different swing dances in downtown and there are certain people who are just so good at being leaders mm-hmm, and they mm-hmm. can just, even if you don't know the move they're doing, they just know exactly how to guide you without words, without you having to understand, right, they right. can guide you to move the way you need to move. And I've been so blessed by just meeting mm. sweet people who can just dance and they just make me feel beautiful because they Woo. know how to guide me. So that's kind <laughs> what of what's a metaphor. Ha- yeah, it's such a metaphor. That's what Christ does, right? Like he's he's the, the leader in this dance. And even though you can't see, she's still blindfolded. Like even though I don't know how to dance, I don't know how to live life, I don't know how to trust you. I don't I don't know. If you let him, he can show you how just without eyes, without anything other than his touch in your life, he can show you how to move and that's the harmony that comes out. And speak into the fact that you were not acting here yeah. with your blindfold. <laughs> oh, yeah. You could not see. I could not see. <laughs> it was 
crazy. It was a crazy process, Papa. I like, uh, yeah, it's entirely genuine. Um, I. Uh, You're speaking about the trust that that takes. Yeah. Oh, there's a t- with your dance partner. Yeah, there is a scene or not a scene, a movement. It's the second fall. Um, the second fall. I literally, he's there. I turn my back to him and I run. It was like three steps as fast as I can. Take the biggest steps I can away from him and then just fall onto my back. <laughs> he's gonna catch me. Um, it was crazy. Now, in rehearsal, in rehearsal was, was he was he oh, always there? Oh yes, <laughs> this guy very stubborn and very stubborn. We'll go with stubborn. And he's like, he's like, I'm going to catch um, you. He's like, he said, I have never dropped someone, and you will not be the first. <laughs> very good. Uh, and so that's how that worked. Um, but it was hard, and there were days where I've shared this with you, but like, I this really was a sacrament of my interior journey with Christ. Like it was a sacrament of my interior journey anyway, because I'm expressing my interior journey. But then it was like performing performing it itself was also a sacrament. Yeah, because I, if I were on a given day, like in an anxious state or on a given day, just not in a good state of trust with the Lord um, in my life or in, in even in this project specifically, like if I wasn't trusting God with it, and with all that it entailed, because it did entail a lot. This project entailed a lot for me. And if I wasn't trusting God with that, I couldn't perform. We had rehearsals that we just stopped halfway through because I just you weren't in the right couldn't place. do yeah. it. I couldn't do it if I wasn't. You can't act trust when right, you're actually right. blindfolded. <laughs> right. You have to actually trust. And not only did I actually have to trust this performer who I worked with that he would be there, um, which he proved himself to be trustworthy that he would catch me. Um, but I also had to trust even more so had to trust the Lord because, because that art made me so raw and that, that state of trust. Yeah, it went really deep and it was, it was a fun challenge. Um, and it was such an amazing experience because we spent, you know, the, the duration of the performance is three minutes. And when we shot this, we were shooting for like three or four hours of just, we run it maybe breathe for a couple minutes, get some water, run it again for consecutive hours. Yeah, yeah. And and when I was in the physical, you know, you're talking about me like doing my little movements. Yeah. All of that, there's no visual with it. Right. <laughs> I have no visual. All I have is literally for those three minutes straight, my only connection to the world around me is someone else's physical presence. And that was a profound experience and metaphor for the interior life which is what it was meant to be but it was a really cool thing that i got to live that as i performed it um it was a really interesting blessing and it was honestly in that dark place where i couldn't see anything and i was just moving um and trusting that i wasn't going to hit walls or the floor because this other person was looking out for me it was it was honestly a, a space of prayer like in that blindfolded state of yeah, I don't know. It was very, it was really interesting. So where where are we in the arc of the story yeah, so with the, the story, three we're falls? At the harmony. The harmony. Yes. So the three har- falls, then a union in in the crucifixion. No, union I, in the crucifixion first, then, then three the three falls, falls, and then after the third fall, she says, "Yes, I'll trust you." And now we're now in harmony. Now they dance in harmony, and okay. that's just when you're when you're moving in step with the Lord, and and life becomes a grand dance, dancing to. You like to talk about dancing to the song of creation right yes yes, yes in indeed. step with the lord so that's what that is and it's just the the specific movements in this part of the dance aren't as symbolic it's more so just let's just move and feel joy and awesome and um yeah and moving. then she comes to the end of her life She comes to the end of her life yeah so she after the last like final lift she is just dies you know curls up and the and it goes back to black and white and her her arc, her time on earth has concluded and he gently lays her um, to her death. And then she comes into heaven, into the marriage, and he picks her up and, and then unveils, this, her. unveils her. Yeah, so we're at a wedding woo, woo. and the veil comes off at the wedding and she sees. So after this whole journey of life where I learned to trust you and I learned to let you be with me in suffering and I learned to let you pick me up when I fall and I learned to dance and step mm. with you mm. all without knowing who you really are. Oof. And now the veil comes off and I see the face of Christ and I see the one who has loved me this whole time. 
and you see the whole you know the beatific vision the whole tapestry of life and it all suddenly makes sense and this is who you were loving me all along um and then and then into the unity so you are doing with this dance everything we were saying at the beginning of our conversation about the purpose of art yeah is to make visible these invisible mysteries Mm -hmm. so we're gonna watch it again and i know you're gonna get a lot more out of it the second time having heard this explanation and I'd love to hear your comments. Yes. Uh, leave comments after you watch it the second time about what you understood that maybe you didn't understand the first time. Mm-hmm. So let's check it out. Round two. My dear Beth, my heart swells with a a fatherly joy and pride to see you at just 19 years old off to such an amazing start as an artist. Mm. Uh, It's beautiful to see your heart getting expressed in art. I need to give a thank you there, Papa, because you have been so very, oh, what's the word? like aggressively determined to foster your children's hearts and passion Mm. and um affirm us in our creative pursuits and and support us in every way you can and be so excited whenever it's like papa look at this thing i drew you know (laughs) it's like you're you've been such a huge force in allowing me to have the time and space and the means to create art and also to believe that it's a worthwhile thing to do because it takes a lot of time to make a painting 
about some random thing that you think about. Not that it's actually random, but it's so easy to think that that's a pointless thing to do with your time. Um, and you have been instrumental in convincing me that it's worthwhile. So I'm thank so glad. you. You are so welcome. <laughs> Beth, what would you say to aspiring artists out there who, who want to take those steps in expressing what's inside, but maybe they're afraid or maybe they grew up in an environment where that wasn't understood as, as something to be affirmed or mm. maybe even worse, it was unaffirmed or mm. degraded or devalued. How can those who are listening, who are saying, I got so much stuff in me that I want to express, how, what, 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 what advice would you give them? Um, artists are their own worst critics. Mm all the time <laughs> and we have whatever type of artist you are you have some ideal you know I talked about that like click where I see it never ever 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 have I made a piece of art and said oh that's exactly what it looked like in my head mm -hmm. never <laughs> it doesn't happen because we're we're human and that's not how it works and also I also talked about being inspired by other artists and like empowered by seeing their work and that is true but i also it can be hard to be inspired because when you're inspired you'll never be good enough for yourself because your art not only will your art never look like what it looks like in your head your art will also never look like how someone else would have drawn it right, someone who right. you admire and who you maybe learn a lot from which is beautiful and good it'll never look like their art and it'll never look like how you wanted it to look and those two things can be so discouraging uh, and it's so easy to give up and it was the the day that I decided I wasn't gonna be mad at how my art looked because you oh that's beautiful uh, you know because there's freedom there's yeah, freedom there. there's then you freedom. can make art then I can make art exactly because because the art that I make looks like I made it yep. and and beautiful. I have a certain imprint and you know artists have different styles and part of that's by choice and a lot of that I think is this is just kind of how it looks when I draw and it's almost like you, you don't, you almost have as much control over it over your own appearance. Like it's just when I put pencil to paper, it kind of looks like this. Right. And it's really easy to not like that. Just like it's easy to not like your own face or right, things right. that you can't change about yourself. But the day I s just said, okay, when I draw, it's going to look like I drew it and it'll never look like it looks in my head because I'm not an infallible creator, but I'm going to not be mad at that and I'm gonna just let that be the way that it is and not s let that stop me from making art that was the day that I was able to create things that is great advice you've got one up on me there <laughs> <laughs> do you want to say anything more about that Thomas uh just no not really okay well actually yeah okay go ahead yeah you, like, lean wait do you have a microphone Thomas you can hear me though okay yeah, I, okay I just have so seen you lean into your style a lot mm. and I admire that like I you actually do have one up on me there because I still get really like uh choked mm -hmm. by not liking the way it looks when I do things so yeah it's hard I mean it's anyone I feel like it's a good analogy of like you look in the mirror and I don't like how my face looks and and there's everyone has to have a journey to coming to accept their own appearance and it's not ever easy and I don't pretend that it is and but I don't know. I want to say something about our, our family here because I, I don't want people to get the wrong impression out there that I think the reason a lot of art happens in our family is because there's a lot of pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and we need that therapy, <laughs> yeah. right? The yeah. art is therapy, right? Am I right, Thomas? Yeah. I mean, that, <laughs> I don't get the wrong impression that we're all like, at home just sketching or listening to music <laughs> happily dandy little flowers and oh my gosh no <laughs> this, sin too. yeah pain yes, well that's sin. where the pain comes from the pain comes from the sin or, there's a lot of brokenness in just the west family bloodline mm -hmm. and everybody in our family has to deal with that in his or her own way mm -hmm. and art is a powerful beautiful way to to deal with that stuff you deal with that stuff by talking to thousands of people for a living I, so I, that's kind of interesting that is interesting <laughs> yes uh, group therapy. yeah yeah it is well it is yeah it's therapy for me for sure i'm, I'm gonna close with this because i think jp2 summarizes here beautifully beth mm. the invitation that you have taken up so powerfully at such a young age 
He says, artists are invited to use their creative intuition to enter into the heart of the mystery of the incarnate God and at the same time into the heart of the mystery of what it means to be human. Mm. You're doing that, girl. (laughs) I love your face. Thanks. And I love your art. Thanks. (laughs) Keep making your art and sharing it with the world. And again, if you want to be in contact with Beth, if you want to give her a commission to put to art, either through painting or do you do commissions for poetry? Too? I haven't, but you can be the first. She's a poet too. <laughs> uh, if you want to commission her to write a poem or or a painting or to choreograph a dance, again, what's well, we'll have it in the show notes. It'll be in the show notes. In Beth the... underscore Rose underscore Art on Instagram, or also my email will be in there. And if you want to learn more about the theology of the body, check out the link to all of the courses that we offer. And I'd recommend, especially one coming up in September, is theology of the body. Level one online. So you can Mm. take it from the comfort of your home. You won't regret it. Thank you so much for joining us in this conversation, Beth. Such a joy. Oh, such a joy. I love you so much. You know, not a lot of uh, college students on summer break get to do this with their dads. So I think you're pretty cool. Thanks for talking to me. (laughs) Thanks, Bethy. Love you. I love you.